in this lecture we are going to learn about aloha aloha which is a multiple access protocol and it's one of the simplest one to understand what is multiple access so here what we say is that there is a medium okay there is a shared medium let's say there is a ethernet wire and there are station 1 2 3 and 4 okay four stations are there who can transmit they have to transmit their frames now there are a few constraints the constraints are that when one someone is transmitting its frame others should not transmit their frame okay because if two people simultaneously transmit their frame then there will be collision okay so there is chance of collision okay there will be collision and then so they should not be transmitting at the same time even if one of the bits get collide then also it will be collision okay so multiple access let's try to see what is pure aloha so four stations are there this is the timeline okay so frame are a group of bits okay so there are a bunch of bits let's say thousand bits so we need to it will take some time to send the frame across the wire okay so that it is sent from one part of the ethernet to the other end of the ethernet okay and that takes time so what happens is that if this frame starts here it will come here then it will travel like this and finally it will come here okay so it takes some time and while this is traveling okay none of the other frame should come and collide with it because both of them will get garbled okay so this frame in it this time frame okay none of the other stations were transmitting so this frame is successfully transmitted then let's see frame 3.1 is the next frame that is transmitted by station a so this is perfectly working fine till here but after that it finds that while this frame is still being transmitted frame 2.1 by station 2 station 2 starts getting transmitted so these two will now collide and then what happens some part of it while it will go without any collision so but it will now collide with frame 4.1 so here some collision takes place between these two then between these also frame 1.2 so all the four frames will get corrupted okay and none of them will be successful so even when one of your bits collide then there will be collision and whole frame will be corrupted now let's see about this frame so frame station 2 again transmits the second frame but it again collides with frame 2 of station 4 because they are overlapping in time okay so only a frame will be successful if it is not colliding with any other one so frame 3.2 so station 3 this frame is okay because none of the other people are sending in this particular time slot so you can see that one and two just two frames succeeded and one two three four and five six frames cor got corrupted okay because of collision so the efficiency is just six by uh, the in fact one minus six by eight so it is one by fourth of a packet are only 25 percent are getting successfully transmitted okay so this is the problem with a shared medium okay where anyone is transmitting whenever they have some data to transmit okay so in fact you can now imagine that if you are going to increase the number of host the collision will increase and the throughput or the number of successful transmissions will become less okay so this is the simple aloha algorithm so we will just look at it in here okay so this is the procedure for pure aloha so i'm a station okay so a station it finds that okay it has something to some data to send so it will put its counter k is equal to zero which means this is my 
first attempt okay so k represents here the number of attempts so now what happens is that it will start sending its frame okay so the station transmits its frame and then what will happen is that i am station a i am sending to station b so i will transmit and how will i know that okay i have succeeded so b will send me an ack so if tp is the maximum propagation time which is the maximum propagation delay that it will take for one frame to be sent to the other side so now i know that okay in twice tp my ack should be here okay so what happens is if ack is received yes my transmission was successful but if ack was not received so what happens is that i will say that okay i am now incrementing my attempt saying that okay my first attempt failed let's try out the next time second one if second attempt fail then i will put k is equal to 3 but you can only try till a maximum of k max which is normally set to 15 so if you are unlucky and you are failing many times and if it exceeds 15 so you are you should abort your transmission but if it your number of attempts is less than 15 so what we do we choose a random number r which is between 0 and 2 to the power of k minus 1 where k is your number of attempts so if i have tried out let's say three times then this is my third trial then what i will do i will generate a random number from 0 to 7 okay and then Uh, any number that i get let's say r so i will wait my waiting time will be r into tp or r into tfr what is tp the maximum propagation delay so i will wait let's say i got a random number 4 so i will wait for 4 into propagation delay time or i will wait 4 into tfr times where tfir is tfr is the average transmission time okay so i somehow wait some random amount of time and how does this randomness help so let's say there were two stations a b and in fact at third one now let's say all of them are trying and we have they have failed k is equal to 4 for them so now let's say they were simultaneously transmitting but so all of them failed next time they will all choose a random number from 0 to 15 so let's say a chose 7 b chose 10 and c chose 2 so now what will happen this will wait for the least amount of time and it will now transmit then this will transmit then this will so now there is lesser probability that all of them will be now sending at the same time because of this random amount of time for which i am waiting okay so this randomness helps in removing the collision so let's try to solve a few numerical that will make our concept more clear so there is a station the stations on a wireless aloha network are a maximum of 600 km apart okay so there is a wireless aloha okay and they are maximum 600 km apart the stations if we assume that the signals propagate at 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meters per second okay speed of light then what we can say the two stations that are farthest apart are 600 km and the light travels at this speed so what will be the propagation time it will be 600 into 10 to the power of 3 meters by 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meters per second okay which comes out to be 2 into 10 to the power of 5 divided by 10 to the power of 8 so which is 2 millisecond so this is the propagation time okay so now it says that okay what will be the now we can find the value of back off time okay so usually the back off time we randomly choose a number from 2 to the power of k minus 1 so 0 to 2 to the power of k minus 1 and then we multiply it with tfr or tr so for k is equal to 1 so you have range 0 to 2 to the power of 1 minus 1 so 2 minus 1 which is 0 or 1 
so in that case stations need to generate random number with value 0 or 1 and then they will either wait for 0 TB or 2 milliseconds okay because TB here is 2 milliseconds but what happens if your k is equal to 2 then I have values from 0 to 2 to the power of 2 minus 1 which is 0 1 2 and 3 so this means that TB can be either 0 or 2 millisecond 4 millisecond or 6 millisecond so if your random number was 3 so you will wait 2 into 3 which is 6 millisecond if our attempts was 3 so we will wait from 0 to 7 R will be from 0 to 7 and then we will be waiting either 0 to 4 till 14 okay seconds milliseconds and when k is usually greater than 10 we set k is equal to 10 okay so this is there now what is the vulnerable vulnerable time for pure aloha okay and what is this period where I am susceptible to collision so let's say I'm station A I begin at this time T and my transmission time is TFR so I'm going to be starting at T I will be transmitting till T plus TFR so I can have collision if someone had started earlier okay at this time if someone had started earlier than this so there would have been no collision because maximum it is tfr is the length but if someone started after the time t minus tfr then there will be collision because your frame length is greater than is equal to tfr so here it started then it will collide with my beginning in the end also if someone starts here in this period between t to t plus tfr then also there will be collision so this time interval in this time interval there should be no other stations transmitting so it will be twice into tf of fr okay that's there to know the this is the vulnerable time now let's try to see so if they are calculating now tfrs so always you have a concrete example it helps so there is a pure aloha network that transmits 200 bits frame so length of the frame is 200 bits on a shared channel of 200 kbps so i transmit at the rate of 200 kilobits per second so what will be the time taken for bit transmission 200 into 10 to the power of 3 bits per second okay so it will be 1 millisecond 1 okay so the vulnerable time then becomes so this is tfr is one millisecond so your vulnerable time will be twice of that so two millisecond so no station should be starting when this our station is starting and the time period for transmission is one millisecond so no station should have started one millisecond before our transmission less than one millisecond before our transmission and between this period okay so that's the case and let's talk about throughput how efficient is this one so efficient means if i'm sending 100 packets frames how many of them are really going to be transmitted that is they are not being affected by collision so that throughput is given by s is g into e to the power of minus 2g what is g you will ask so g is average number of frames that are sent that are sent in one tfr okay so in one frame time what you send the average number of frames so this has a throughput that is maximum itself is just 18.4 percent okay and that happens when you have average transmission rate of g is equal to half frame per second okay so let's try to see one more problem so a pure aloha network transmits 200 bits frame 
on a shared channel 200 kbps so again from last calculation our frame transmission time tfr will be 1 millisecond what is the throughput of this system all stations together produces if 1000 frames per second are sent so if 1000 frames per second are sent it means one frame are sent in one millisecond time so your g is equal to one frame per time of the frame unit okay g is one here so your s is g into e to the power of minus 2g so if you do the calculation it comes out to be 13.5 percent and then it asks what is if i am sending 500 frames so it means 500 frames per second okay so 500 frames per second or this is 500 by 1000 frames per millisecond okay which is half frame per millisecond or in the tfr time period so g will be now the best case and it will be if you see so it is 18.4 percent okay so this shows how you calculate the throughput and best throughput is this if you try to decrease the number of frames per second then also it's going to be 15.2 percent okay so that's the case for pure aloha and pure aloha we can very much improve it why because we never took care of okay so there was a very big that contention window okay kind of vulnerable time so here what we do we make slots okay i know that one frame takes tfr time so i will make slots of that length and then there is a rule that stations can transmit only at the starting time of the slot so frame 1.1 got transmitted there was no collision frame 2.1 started but frame 3.1 also started okay so frame 2 station 2 and station 3 both sent at the same time so there was collision during the third time slot against frame station 1 and station 4 sends packets together so there is collision here in fourth slot only station 2 cents this works fine in fifth slot only station 4 cents it works fine okay so now you can see our vulnerable period has decreased so now there will be no chance that okay any previous frame that was sent it will collide with a new starting frame only now our vulnerable time is just one frame slot one tfr okay so that helps in improving the throughput okay so the improvement is now s is g into e to the power of minus g and here your maximum throughput will be when you have only one frame per time slot you send so you have 36.8 percent is the throughput okay that means out of 100 packets if you send 36.8 packets will be transmitted successfully and vulnerable time is just one times tfr okay